All right, time for another quick, hopefully, uh, draftphysics.com or debatephysics.com video presentation on the double slit, just going through all the little details that kind of make it clear that this has nothing to do with any kind of wave interference, uh, superpositions, uh, photons going through both slits, all of that stuff. Really just has to do with you breaking photons that is disturbing them in some way and then putting them back together when they go on the surface. So what can be deduced is that the single slit is really just the two surface experiments. So whether you have a single impediment or whether you have a single opening, you'll get a similar pattern. <coughs> and it's created basically because photons at the surfaces, and that's what the math verifies, uh, are the ones that are creating all of the fringe light. So all the fringe light is created by photons that travel near the surface. In my opinion, they're disturbed by electrons. The electrons have momentum, and that's what changes the path of the photons. And you're just saying, when are they pieces in phase? When are the pieces out of phase? And that'll decide whether there's a bright or light. Uh, the double maxima is created because it's really two patterns. There's one pattern going this way, where the two lines go this way, and your path length the difference goes around this arc. And then there's two that go the opposite way. Um, and <clears throat> so that's basically the, whatever this number is, there'll be twice that many nodes. So however many wavelengths fit between this distance will tell you how many possible locations will have a node. And the one that decides whether this is going to be a big double maximum or a small double maxima, you know, whether there's, it'll change size a little bit, uh, is going to be decided by this over here, where it's basically you're saying this is the distance at uh, 180 degrees, and that's basically telling you, okay, whatever you have here, if you have a whole wavelength here, then you're going to have uh, an on, and if you have, uh, uh, if you have a remainder, uh, like 15.5, then it's going to be an off, and that's what you're starting with, and that's going to decide what you have here in the middle. Physicists will often say, uh, Professor Lewin in particular, that because these two little lines here, this is one less than one millimeter, this distance, and these two lines intersect, uh, they say it's a, it's a, you know, doesn't, it's a, doesn't need to be demonstrated. It's so factual that this has to be an on here in the very center, but the fact is, is that on in the very center is only one millimeter in the pattern that might be six or ten inches across so it's a, a tiny contribution that's made by rays uh, bits of photon that are both heading in opposite directions so to speak it's only these ones that are going the same way that are the ones causing the fringe pattern the uh, fact is their theory says all of these should be the same brightness because it's being created by some sort of random that's Feynman's theory that randomness is creating it well it's clearly not uh, in terms of the intensity diminishing, there's no evidence that photons are ever found in these extreme locations because uh, I would argue they're never, they never hit enough electrons to bend that far. So that's why the pattern is limited and why it diminishes as you go further out because it's less and less likely a piece of photon is going to be deflected that great a distance, you know, that high an angle of deflection. There's going to be more here and the fewer and fewer at the higher reflective la uh, layers and um, you know and that's what the the outcome verifies is the wider the slit is the brighter the center is and the more um, the light just diminishes with distance because fewer and fewer photons pieces of photons get bent clearly there is a huge distinction between the single slit or the two surface experiment and the double slit, which will be the four surface experiment. There's four point sources. The math verifies that because when you do the math, you use this outside distance. You don't use the inside distance. You don't use one slit's distance. You use this maximum distance to tell you this little node size. And the fact is, is the shortest distance will be creating the envelope for those nodes. So it really is just a combination of two single slits and when you combine the two single slit experiments, which you're really doing, what you're really doing, this camera, <laughs> you know, what you're really doing is bringing two single slits that have this tiny distance. And then when you bring them together, you create this big distance here on the outside. And that's why you get these little nodes. The big distance creates the little tiny bars. The smaller the distance, the bigger the bars. 
simple premise. The more wavelengths of difference there are, the bigger this length is in the triangle, the more places you have a wavelength of difference. Clearly, the experiment should always be done with an equidistance to the target, and that really illustrates the fact that there's a finite number of these nodes. The fact is the nodes get bigger as you go more horizontal, I mean more of the 180 degree sides. It gets more and more of the zero degree, however you want to look at it. Um, they're larger and they get smaller and smaller and smaller as they come towards the center. Uh, these are all important details. So yeah, mathematically it's very simple. The outside, the, high, the largest distance between two point sources makes a contribution that makes these little dots. The, the smallest distance is making broad, big dots. And when you combine those two, you end up with a pattern that looks like this. And you'll see that in many of the displays, you'll see a little faint node, little faint ones where these dark spots are, just indicating that only two sources put photons there. And so you're only seeing what two sources produce. Uh, so it f completely explains uh, the experimental outcomes and you can have there's a second verification that we really are talking about just breaking photons and remaking photons as proved by the polarizing film so we'll do that real quick so you, if you put the film this way then you have another film going this way you get zero photons coming out and all you have to do is put in a diagonal and you'll get back 25 or so percent of your photons and the reason why you can get them back is because they're not broken they're not destroyed they're not exterminated they're not in some way catastrophically unrecoverable and so what you're simply doing is making their phase you're putting them back in phase and the fact that the polarizing film itself is just two layers of material and what you're really doing is sending photons through two layers some of them pieces are going through two layers. Some pieces are going through one layer of material. And you probably can't see that very well, but it's okay. Where it goes through two layers, there's two phase shifts. Where it goes through one layer, there's only one phase shift. So obviously, when you put it through a third layer, another layer of this stuff, you put phases back in phase, out of phase. And that's all you're really doing here. So really, the, the experiment just creates... Um, it's not random, but it does create scatter at the surfaces. And the scatter just has a 50-50 chance of being back in phase or out of phase. So it's 50-50 that you have a photon at a certain location or no photon. And that's why you have a pattern essentially made of half light, half dark. Now the fact is, is that photons are pretty forgiving so they can be a bit off in phase and you still have a photon that's visible because the light spots are bigger than the dark spots uh let's see if there's anything else so it's all mathematically understandable in the sense that the math is consistent with understanding the surfaces at as point sources they really can't be understood as wave sources you wouldn't put like if i made a a slit experiment uh, you know, here to surface experiment, you wouldn't think, okay, that you could be possible to create a wave here and here. The wave centers would have to be on the points. That's the math that works. So the waves couldn't both be popping through the center. They would have to be centered right on the surfaces. So clearly indicating it's as all just a surface phenomenon. The photons are physically disturbed by the surfaces. It's a real phenomenon. It's not a magical one. It's not some, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a physical mechanism, the surface, causing a physical change to the photon. And the fact is the change can make the photon broken, invisible, or it can make it visible, depending on how you affect it. But yes, you must hit, you must have energy hit both surfaces. And uh, it can be demonstrated that the single photon experiments really do have plenty of energy in them. And that really all you're doing is, again, reconstructing broken pieces of photon. And so making the faint fringe pattern. All right, that's probably enough. So we'll leave it there. Quick video. Um, it was intended for 
a specific person who made a video, Dave Guy, but his video was just so bad, <laughs> you know, that, uh, you know, I was going to play it, and uh, I ended up watching a little bit of it, and it had terrible audio, and it was just a mess, so I said, well, I did all this drawing for nothing, so I said, uh, what the hell, I'll make a quick video, and so I'll pause now just to see if there's anything else I think I left out. All right, just to emphasize the, the simple truth that there's two patterns and they're a millimeter apart. One pattern going this way, one pattern going this way with pieces. And that's why you have the overlap here. This is really two nodes here in the center. The double maxima is just two nodes overlapping each other. And they'll overlap each other um, more or less depending on whether there's a whole number of wavelengths in the total distance between the two point sources. So if there's a, a whole wavelength of difference, if it's an even number, I mean, an even no remainder, uh, then this will be its largest. Uh, no, it will have the most overlap. And if it's a off, then it'll have the least overlap. But it's always an overlap. All right, so enough of video. 10 minutes, well, 11. Okay, close enough.